Welcome to tonight's Finance Committee meeting for October the 17th, the year 2022. If you'll stand with us at this time, we have our invocation led by Mayor Marlon Coleman, followed by the flag salute. Lord, we thank you so much for this day. Father, we pray your blessing upon these committee chairs and all of us as a committee body on tonight. Father, that we may follow guidance from the direction of your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> finance Committee agenda item number one, please. Consider approval of Finance Committee minutes of October 3rd, 2022, or take other necessary action. After reviewing the minutes, are there any corrections or additions to our minutes? Remove, um, move for approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve our minutes. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number one passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of claims for all city departments September 24th, 2022 through October 7th, 2022, or take other necessary action. We have a report from the Purchasing Committee. Well, the Purchasing Committee did meet this afternoon and we approved the claims. I move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve our claims list. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon uh, Coleman. Yes. Item number two passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval to purchase 4G modems to be used for lift stations as a sole source from automatic engineering in the amount of $52,035 or take other necessary action. Mr. Stewart. Yes. Uh, as we discussed in the purchasing committee, this is to replace some existing 3G modems. Uh, that run our lift stations and help it communicate with the uh, sewer plant itself. This is for 15 4G <coughs> modems. We're actually going to do the repair, the replacement ourselves. Um, the modems themselves are $41,760. The service fee for them for the annual service is $10,275. And I missed uh, on the sole source, there was actually an additional $500. Uh, for delivery that brought the price to $52,535. That's what was approved in purchasing committee. So the item agenda needs to read 52,535 instead of $52,035. Um, I'll answer any questions, but this was approved in purchasing committee and we do recommend the staff to approve. Any questions for Mr. Stewart? Move for approval. I second it. I have a motion and a second to approve this agenda item. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number three passes. Item number four, please. Consider approval of Olson Agreement Amendment Number Three between the City of Muskogee and Olson Incorporated, providing for professional services for roadway improvements for Smith Ferry Road, or take other necessary action. Mrs. Stewart. Uh, Mr. Reeves is going to address this one. This item is related to uh, the discharge pond on uh, Smith Ferry Road. Uh, basically, it's across from the Hilldale High School and adjacent to a property that has made several improvements, which required us mm -hmm. to uh, basically evaluate the uh, engineering on that pond. I don't know if I'm on that. And so the engineering services will require resurveying the property and evaluating the discharge location and the outlet structure. And so um, we, we would recommend approval on the project and I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Reeves? Move for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number four <coughs> passes. Item number five, please. Consider approval of final payment to Cook Consulting LLC for Muskogee Wastewater System Improvements Interpac Extension Project Number Two Zero Two One Zero One Seven in the amount of seventy seven thousand six hundred fourteen dollars and ninety cents or take other necessary action. Mr. Reeves. 
uh, Oklahoma Interpac previously used a lagoon system for their wastewater, and uh, the city uh, installed a new uh, line to connect to our wastewater systems uh, for Oklahoma Interpac at 2424 North Main Street, and it was paid for by economic development funds. And I would be happy to answer any questions. Staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Any further questions for Mr. Reeves? Move for Move. approval. Second. I have a motion and a second. Roll call, please. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. Item number five passes, and that is our final item for the Finance Committee. Welcome to tonight's Public Works Committee meeting, October 17th of 2022. Item number one, please. Consider approval of Public Works Committee minutes of October 3rd, 2022, or take other necessary action. Everybody's had time to review the minutes. Do we have any discussion? Move for approval. I second it. Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number two, please. Consider approval of ordinance number 4115A, amending the City of Muskogee Code of Ordinances, Chapter 82, Utilities, Article 6, Refuse Collection, Section 82-735, Definitions, Section 82-742, Collection Carts, Owner Responsibility, Section 82-744, Extra Collectible Solid Waste, Unlawful Possession of Carts, Termination of Service, Section 82-747, Return Pickups, Section 82-748, Syringe Disposal, Section 82-748, Collection of charge, Charges Guidelines, Providing for Repealer Severability and Setting an Effective Date, or Take Other Necessary Action. Mr. Mike Stewart. Actually, Mr. Rigney, our Operations Manager, is uh, he's worked diligently on this, and he's going to present. All right, so in this ordinance, the changes that we're making is removing item G from section two, which refers to the bags outside of the cart. Um, and I have a brief presentation that I'd like to go over for why we believe that's a good idea. So um, we're going to talk about the final phase of moving to the automated trucks that we have on the road currently. So. In recent years, the strategic initiative of the City Council has been to make the city more aesthetically pleasing and improve our public image. This is a great, great opportunity to move the needle in aesthetics as well as immediately and down the road improving public image. So here's a video of our uh, automated truck doing what it does best, and that's automatedly picking up trash. And here are the reasons we'd like to move away from picking up bags and uh, moving to providing a second cart or additional carts at a reduced rate. Uh, health and safety concerns, not only for our employees, but for the public, public image, cost effectiveness, stormwater concerns. And we feel this is an opportunity to optimize the sanitation department by reducing the number of trucks that it takes to collect refuse by not running the truck specifically for the bag service. So first, I'd like to talk about employee health. Um, we have, uh, when we pick up the bags, we have several concerns about health. One is needles in the bags. So we want to protect our employees from that, and the best way to do that is to keep them from coming in contact with the bags of uh, waste. Another issue that we uh, feel we can avoid by going away from the bag service is human waste that is in the bags of any kind. That's a um, prime opportunity for communicable diseases to be spread, and we want to go away from that. COVID-19 as well, uh, ergonomic concerns. One of the highest rates of injury in sanitation is, uh, now that we've got the automated trucks on the road, is employees picking up the bags and throwing them into the trucks. Sometimes the bags are overloaded, and if they don't break, that is a unnecessary strain on our employees. We also would be reducing heat and cold related injuries by taking employees off of the back of the trucks and keeping them in the cabs. Um, as far as public health and safety, it's unsanitary to have loose trash and bags of trash outside. Um, those bags break and that exposes the public to uh, waste of all the same kinds that we talked about uh, for our employees. We want to avoid the 
uh, public coming into contact with that as well. Um, another initiative is keeping Muskogee beautiful. The bags sitting out by the curbs are not aesthetically pleasing. Um, discontinuing the bag service will cut uh, down on trash coming out of the bags, whether it's from the bags breaking or animals getting into the bags and spreading that trash around. Um, right now, a residential can is half a yard of waste, so two yards of waste per month approximately. One yard of waste costs about $10 to dump at the landfill, so that's why we came up with the $10 for the reduced rate cart. We're doing it at our break-even number, so we're not making profit off these second carts. It's just <coughs> providing an alternative to the citizen that helps uh, improve our sanitation department and our public uh, appearance. We also have some stormwater concerns. A lot of the times when you put these bags out by the curb, they are blocking stormwater flow in our bar ditches. And sometimes those bags get into the uh, catch basins, which can cause flooding. So our solution is instead of offering a bag pickup, we supply an additional cart or carts at a reduced rate to any resident that produces trash in excess uh, of what will fit in the poly cart. This accommodates the citizens who use more trash with a good deal while st still working to resolve some of the issues we have in sanitation. Uh, some other important information is the majority of citizens do not use extra bags. Only about 15% utilize the out of cart set out program, which we refer to as the bag service. The citizens who do use extra bags are typically the same ones week after week, so it's not like it's a big change for the majority of the citizens. So our plan is to uh, start our implementation now with these housekeeping items that we have on the agenda, and then we'd like to uh, put this plan into action around the first of the year. Does anybody have any questions? Any questions? Madam Chair. Yes. So one of the questions I have is if we go in this direction, uh, the residents that opt to not get a second polycart, how do we know that they're not going to still put bags outside. We will be informing the public with stickers on the carts, door hangers, uh, inserts in the water bill, and in short, Mr. Mayor, whenever we have reports of those, we'll explain to them our new process and that they are able to purchase that second cart at a reduced rate or they will need to, once their trash is dumped, just put that bag back into the poly cart to be picked up okay. on the next round. All right. I mean, my only concern was, I, I think this is a good idea what we're trying to do. I'm only concerned about the residents who don't want to pay the $10, but then they still have excess trash, and then we still got the same trash image problem. It'll be a learning process, and we'll, we'll adjust to that as we run into uh, things down the road, there's always going to be unforeseen circumstances, um, but this is a step in the right direction. So um, I share that concern, but we're, we're taking steps forward to see what our next steps have to be. Okay. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, yeah. I, I'm with the mayor. I, I do think this is a great idea, but this is also just a question. You know, I'm one of the ones who've been here. So long I remember when and I just want to make sure that this process that we're heading in now is not going to reduce uh, our workforce no one will be lose their job because we're going through this process as far as the sanitation workers I want to make sure absolutely not we're not doing away with any positions due to this move what we are doing is going to take the employees that were on that bag truck and more effectively utilize them in the sanitation department and other roles so that truck that will go around and get the bags, it's not going completely out of service because the way that our city is set up, we have to have a semi-automated truck. So um, that truck will go around, still collect the dead ends, and it will still collect the blue cart handicap cans. And then they will have more time to assist in putting out carts, cleaning carts, cleaning our trucks. That's one thing that we can do to extend the life of these trucks is keep them cleaner so the garage can provide more effective maintenance. So that's one of the primary goals, to use that workforce in a different role that does still fit into their job description. Thank you. I have a question. Yes, ma'am. Um, during the holidays, like Christmas, I think I brought this up before, <laughs> there's going to be exceptions like during Christmas. Mm -hmm. for those Christmas, we will still provide some extra service for the bags of paper, or the bags of right. wrapping paper and all of that. Yes, this is just, this isn't uh, going to affect any of the, the holidays. Okay. 
uh, that are consumer holidays with the extra trash. This is just for our, our daily routes. Uh, Avery, would you address the bag service on Friday as well? Yes, the yard waste is not affected by this. Our yard waste is actually picked up by environmental control. So the bags of leaves that are put out and the bundles of sticks that are picked up on Fridays will still be picked up on Fridays and are not affected by this uh, initiative that we're going for. Thank you. Any more questions? Any discussion? That's the will of the body. One thing I do want to point out, uh, one thing I do want to point out, uh, Madam Chair, is that in the agenda item, 82-748 uh, is listed twice. Uh, the one related to collection of charges guidelines should be 82-749. And so um, when this is approved, we'd like that correction made. And then when this goes on to um, City Council for reconsider not reconsideration, but for final adoption, second reading, as it were, um, then we will have that corrected. Thank you, Roy. I move for approval as amended. I second it. Okay. Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Jarek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. The item passes. Item number three, please. Consider approval of resolution number 2919, adopting amendment to Appendix A of the Muskogee City Code pertaining to schedule of fees and charges for additional poly cards as per attached document or take other necessary action. Avery. This is just a housekeeping item to go along with that, <coughs> making sure our Schedule A appendix uh, for the fees and rates is accurate. Thank you. Any questions or discussion? Move for approval. I second it. Roll call. Shirley Hilton Flannery. Yes. Tracy Hoos. Yes. Stephanie Jones. Yes. Jamie Stout. Yes. Deputy Mayor Derek Reed. Yes. Mayor Marlon Coleman. Yes. No citizen, oh, item passes. No citizens wish to speak, so this meeting is adjourned. I'm sorry about that, totally forgot about. Sorry about that, to totally forgot about item number four, which is stricken from the agenda. And with that, there's no citizens wishing to speak. So now we can adjourn. <laughs>